What's up, it's Ryan with True Dad Materia, and I'm going to share with you some Return to Moria tips and tricks that would have saved me and Dustin a lot of time and pain had we known them before we started playing the game. Let's dig in. Tip number one, don't build so many bases. When you first start playing Return to Moria, they give you the perfect spot to build your first base. After that, they don't hold your hand so much. They give you lots of opportunities to build bases in different places, and you can choose which one you like the most. If you're like me, you'll start building a base in one place, explore a little further, find another good spot for a base, and start building one there. If you do it that way, you have to break down your base in one location and move it to another location with your limited inventory space. The best way to handle this is to find a strategic point for a base that will let you explore the widest area possible without running into danger or having to track back to your base to dump resources. You probably won't come back to your first base very often, so don't worry about hoarding a bunch of resources and building it up too big. Your second base option may be in or near the Elven Quarters. You really don't need to build this up very much either. You can have a basic base to start, but don't really focus on building out a big base until you get to the Mines of Moria themselves. Once you make it to the Mines, you'll find the perfect spot for a base where you can start exploring and hoarding resources in chests and pallets so that you can build your first real base and hunker down. A while after this, you'll unlock the ability to fast travel, which will negate the need to build large bases in other areas of the map. You can build your primary base at the beginning of the Mines of Moria, and then as you move into the Lower Deeps and Dwaro Delph and beyond, you can just teleport back to dump resources. Or you can build smaller outposts where you can dump your resources and slowly move them back to your primary base. Tip number two, hoard everything. You're a dwarf, you should want to hoard everything, right? But not just gold and jewels, although those are helpful later on in the game. At the beginning of the game, you wanna make sure you're hoarding things like stone and meat and coal. These things are plentiful at the beginning of the game, so it's easy to just ignore them and walk by. But if you grab as much as you can, you'll find that you won't run out when you really need it. I found myself playing the game quite a bit and not having stone when I needed it, not having enough meat, running out of coal when it really would have been useful. Grab these plentiful resources at the beginning of the game, stack up, and make sure you always have them. Later in the game, you'll want to make sure that you keep all of the black diamonds you find unless you absolutely need them. Ubossum wood will be really helpful to stock up on, and make sure that you're definitely stocking up on tin ore as this is not nearly as plentiful as it should be. Tip number three, plan ahead. As I was going out and exploring, I usually wanted to keep as many inventory spaces open as possible so I could collect all the new things and take them back to my base. The problem with that was that I would usually get far away from my base and find myself exhausted, hungry, and with damaged armor. So I didn't have any way of fixing any of those problems without hiking my way back to base, exhausted, hungry, and with broken armor. And I'd usually end up running into some batch of orcs or something that would kill me and I'd have to go back and collect my stuff. Very frustrating. To avoid this problem, I started carrying with me stone and wood so that I could build a campfire, cloth scraps to build a bedroll, and a little more wood to build a meal table. I'd make sure I had meat on me to make a meal so I wasn't hungry anymore, and I would make sure that I was carrying five iron ingots to build a repair smithy to repair my armor at this little outpost I was making. This was a great little way to build an outpost if I was going to go into an orc town and fight a boss, or if I was going to take on a cave troll. I also found it really helpful to make sure I had both a slashing or piercing weapon and a blunt weapon so that if I was fighting something with armor, I could do extra damage to it, and if I was fighting something without armor, I could continue to do a good amount of damage without being hindered by whatever single weapon I had on me. The first boss you run into is really difficult if you have a slashing or piercing weapon, but actually really easy if you've got a maul or something blunt. Carrying one of each weapon with you does take up an extra inventory slot, but it can be well worth it and actually save your life. Tip number four, avoid shadow curses and poison. Yeah, Shadow curses and poison will kill you dead. They ignore armor, and it doesn't matter how much health you have because the things last forever. It's super frustrating, and I really dislike them. So shadow curses, you often have to run through to get to the other side for resources or to move further in the map. And I found myself dying or being really low on health for a boss fight because of shadow curses. Imagine how hard I facepalmed when a friend of mine suggested I just build quick platforms to get to the other side. The next 
next time I played, I gave this a try and felt so stupid for not recognizing that you can just carry some wood with you, build a couple platforms on the wall, and walk above the Shadow Curse in safety. Now, poison's a little different. Poison can be inflicted by poison mushrooms in the lower deeps or by certain goblins or orcs that attack you with poison weapons. This is really tricky because unless you dodge, you can't avoid being poisoned. And you can see your poison status indicator increasing over time as you take hits, and it really only takes a couple to be fully poisoned. If you are fully poisoned, you'll take additional damage for a prolonged period of time that, in my opinion, lasts way too long. So until you have the ability to cure poison, which you'll unlock later in the game, I would highly recommend carrying the materials for an outpost so that you can rest and heal yourself, and also trying to dodge and avoid some of that poison from the goblins. Also make sure you pay attention to which mushrooms you're walking by in the lower deeps to avoid getting poisoned by a nice green cloud of mist. Tip number five, learn to cook. That's right, it's not just a helpful life skill, this can save your life and return to Moria. Once you can build an oven, you can take meals with you as you explore instead of having to make them at your base. This is a huge quality of life upgrade, because if you get hurt exploring, you don't have to go all the way back to your base or build a campfire and a meal table to restore health. You can just eat one of your nice meals that you have with you. So this is gonna require that you stock up on the individual ingredients like kazad oats and meat, and eventually salt as you find that. But there are some really important things to look for, specifically in the elven quarters, like Elbereth's Blessing and the Aule Bloom. Once you get enough of these ingredients, you can craft things like Limbus, which not only restore your full health, but also restore all of your energy and help you feel fully rested. This is fantastic for saving your life and allowing you to explore further in more dangerous areas of the mines. Tip number six, use the map. So I don't really use the map in Return to Moria. I explore and I wander down different hallways until I find what I'm looking for. When I play with Dustin, he likes to play smart. He uses his map to mark areas with waypoints that he's already explored so we don't go down the same hallway over and over again if we're looking for new statues or or orc towns or particular resources. This is a phenomenal idea, and again, facepalm moment for me not thinking of it. You can use waypoints to mark particular resources, orc towns, trolls, hallways you've explored, and so much more. Anything that you want to remember, mark it on the map with a waypoint and use that waypoint to find it later. Tip number seven, building statues is awesome, until it's not. Building statues in Return to Moria grants you something called recipe fragments. Once you get all of the recipe fragments needed for a particular item, you can craft new weapons and armor and generally become more of a menace to the orc population of Moria. However, each area in Return to Moria, such as the Mines of Moria, the Elven Quarter, Duaro Delph, the Lower Deeps, etc., has a finite number of recipes that can be unlocked. If you build more statues, then there are recipe fragments to be unlocked locked, you get a small number of low-level resources that don't really help you very much. So once you see that final three of three or two of two, don't bother building any more statues and wasting your stone or granite. You're just going to end up disappointed. Tip number eight, place carvings on tables. So in each area of Return to Moria, you'll find a unique table that represents a different dwarf's collection of statues dedicated to that dwarf. A little narcissistic, but I'm not here to judge. If you find all of the carvings of a particular dwarf and place it on that dwarf's table, you'll be rewarded with a unique recipe that can't be found by repairing a statue. This can be a great way to get some special gear, stand out among your peers, and generally survive better in the dangerous mines. Tip number nine, read somebody else's journal. As you explore the mines of Moria, you may come across the remnants of a small camp left by a ranger probably a long time ago. These rangers left their journals and goblins have been taking pages out and scattering them across the mines. Now this is great for you completionists that love to find all the little things throughout the games, but pretty annoying for the rest of us. However, it can be really helpful to gather all of the ranger journal pages and bring them back to their correlated books because you can get really cool recipes that you can then take back to your brewing station and make drinks with all sorts of different benefits. Trust me, it's worth it to find these pages and bring them back. And tip number 10, sing whenever you can. 
When I first saw the singing feature of Return to Moria, I thought it was a cute little thing to play on the idea of dwarves singing while they work. However, when I noticed what the singing actually did, I realized how beneficial it actually is. Stamina is a precious resource in any survival game, and Return to Moria is no different. You can run out of stamina pretty quickly and you have to slow down and wait for it to replenish before you get back to doing whatever you were trying to do. However, when you're mining in Return to Moria and granted the option to sing, you actually don't use stamina. This is a great way of being able to mine more ore or stone or granite or whatever you need without having to stop and wait for your stamina to replenish every two seconds. There are also a few monuments here and there at which you can sing and unlock special recipes or bonuses. This can be really powerful and there are some areas of the game where you get really cool things that you can't get anywhere else by singing. Plus there's the added benefit that when you're singing with other dwarves, you all harmonize together. It doesn't really do anything special for you in the game, but it's really nice and it just kind of adds to that dwarven ambience. So there you have it, 10 Return to Moria tips and tricks to help you get the most out of the game and stop wasting time and resources. This game has garnered some bad reviews, probably amongst elves, but it's actually a lot of fun and I'd highly recommend playing it. When you do play, be sure to keep these tips in mind. And in true dad fashion, remember to save early and save often. See you next time.